So then, <clears throat> we, the, uh, today, the Feast of St. Alexis, and the day after the uh, motu proprio Tradiciones Custodes of Pope uh, Francis yesterday, and today a few considerations on the uh, truthful but wicked motu proprio of yesterday and what to do about it. And uh, But first we'll read the epistle today of St. Alexis, Saturday, July 17th, <clears throat> the day after Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which is taken from the first epistle of St. Paul, I mean, uh, to, 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 to Timothy, chapter 6. Dearly beloved, godliness with contentment is a great pain, is a great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and certainly we can carry nothing out. But having food and wherewith to be covered, with these we are content. For they that will come, become rich fall into temptation, and into the snare of the devil, and unto many unprofitable and hurtful desires, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For covetous, covetousness is the root of all, uh, of all evils, which came which some desiring have erred from the faith, and have entangled themselves in many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, fly these things, and pursue justice, godliness, faith, charity, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. And then the Gospel. Taking that according to St. Matthew, chapter 19. At that time, Peter said to Jesus, Behold, we have left all things and have followed thee. What therefore shall we have? And Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, this you should that those you have followed that you that you have who have that you have who have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit. On the seat of his majesty, you who shall you you also shall sit on the twelve seats, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall possess life everlasting. Thus for the words of today's holy gospel. Amen, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. So, a few considerations. We are now on day two of this motu proprio of Pope Francis, Traditiones Custodes, which is very well named because it means guard, the guards of tradition. And in a true demonic form, I'm sure he knows exactly what he means to say. And what he means to say is, he is going to post guards of tradition, that is, the bishops and authorities of the church, who will guard tradition so that it is locked up forever, and so that it dies. And that is, and this guardianship of tradition has is one of the great goals of Vatican II, to guard and tradition, to lock it up, and to see that it is buried in a dungeon. And as they say in the old days, they will lock you up and throw away the key. And so that there will be a locking up of tradition, a throwing away of the key, the eradicating completely of Catholic tradition and the Catholic faith. But know this concerning this, this desire of Pope Francis, and the desire of Vatican II, and the desire of Satan in hell. They know that they are going to fail. But they will do as much damage as they can while they can. And they believe, in fact, that, for, that Our Lady allowed the, yesterday on the Feast of Lady of Mount Carmel that this decree, this modu proprio, made by the personal power of Pope Francis and done with all the legal terminology. Those that love legalisms, those that love the legalistic way of looking at things, will note carefully the final paragraph of the document of the modu proprio where he says, this decree, all other decrees are abrogated and this decree is, is to be put into, into effect no matter what, notwithstanding any other consideration, even things worthy of consideration and belief. 
and that this decree must be followed perfectly using all the ancient terminology that we would find in any legal document previous to Vatican II. Very traditional. The last paragraph is very traditional. That we are, this is a law, this is a personal law made by Pope Francis, by his own personal movement, motu proprio, and, and, and abrogating all previous laws which were made by Pope John Pope Paul VI, Pope John Paul II, and Pope Benedict concerning the Latin Mass, and that now the Latin Mass is going to undergo these new laws, and, the, and also he states correctly in that motu proprio, that he is following the mind and the will of the council, which he is, following the mind and the will of Pope John Paul II when he released the Latin Mass in 1984 by the document Quater Ad Hinc Anos, following the mind of John Paul II again in Ecclesia Dei Flicta in 1988, and following the mind and practice of Pope Benedict XVI in 2007 when he issued the Summorum Motificum. And remember in Summorum Motificum, the final document, Pope, uh, Pope uh, Benedict XVI said, this freeing up of the Latin Mass, which is to the extent to where as long as no one rejects the ordinary form, which is the Novus Ordo Mise, which was designed by Satan in hell and put here on earth in 1969, and that this, this evil mass, which is not really a mass, this evil uh, worship of God, it must be accepted as the ordinary and correct worship. And that the, new, the old mass, which was given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ and passed down by St. Peter through the city of Rome and to the whole Roman church, down the last 2,000 years, this is only an extraordinary mass which is allowed only by indult. Now this is stated over and over again, ever since 1969 until 2021. And never has Rome retracted that position. Not for one instant. There are some liars who will tell you that in 2007, when Pope Benedict XVI said that the old mass was never abrogated, that when he said that, he said that the Latin mass is okay and it can be tolerated no matter what. But in that very same document, Summorum Pontificum, in which the Pope Benedict XVI said the Latin Mass was never abrogated, which would mean, therefore, it is still the law of the Church, therefore, it is still in effect, he said, therefore, I am going to graciously allow the Mass. How can he allow something which is, which is never abrogated and is already the law of the Church? And he said, I'm allowing it under these conditions, and it will take effect on September the 14th of, of this year. And they, not only am I allowed under these conditions, which, which are, are, are more loose than the ones of 88 and more loose than the ones of 1984, but these conditions are to be evaluated. And in three years' time, we'll come back together and determine whether or not we should continue this motu proprio sumorum pontificum. It took 13 years for the gathering to take place. 13 years later, on July the 16th, 2021, yesterday, Finally, Pope Francis said, we have now gathered the documentation and the, and the, the, uh, the observations of the bishops, just as Benedict XVI requested in 2007. Instead of being three years, it took 13 years. And I'm very concerned and worried about the results, because as was stated clearly in 2007, and as was stated clearly in 1988, and as was stated clearly in 1984, the allowance of the Latin Tridentine Mass is only on the condition that one accepts unequivocally, absolutely, and completely the Novus Ordo Mass and does not in any way impugn the Second Vatican Council and its errors and heresies. That was the condition in 1984. That was the condition in 88. It's a condition in 2007. And now souls are scandalized that it is also the condition in 2021. So I mentioned something earlier, it is as though someone, drops off, someone jumps off of a skyscraper and the wind is blowing and he likes the weather and all of a sudden he's shocked because he hits a sudden stop on the pavement and he splatters. He says, I can't believe I splattered. The air was free, it was a hot day and the wind was blowing and I was flying freely through the air. What's the problem? The problem is you jumped off a skyscraper. And the principle of death has been in you since you left the top of the building. 
and all you're waiting for is the moment that you hit the ground. You saw a man drop off a five-story skyscraper, you heard about him splattering. You heard about a man off a ten-story skyscraper, you heard about him splattering. Another guy on a twenty-story ladder, you heard about him splattering, but you're on top of the World Trade Center. And so, I don't think it'll happen to me. Everyone else jumped off their skyscraper and they splattered because they weren't high enough. They weren't high enough. And the breeze is so much different up here and the breeze is so much better here. And I did jump off the skyscraper and I am heading towards the ground, but how dare you be judgmental and think I'm going to hit it? The fact is when you choose to jump off a skyscraper and you choose to fly towards the ground, you will splatter. Now what has happened is that souls have chosen to jump off of the, the rock of our holy church. Now what is this rock? What is that which holds our church together? And then what is it that is the essence of our church? The essence of our church at Petra Erat Christus, says St. Paul. And the rock was Christ. They drank from the rock. They all ate the same spiritual food. All drank the same spiritual drink. But with most of them, God was not pleased, says St. Paul. And they drank from the rock, and the rock was Christ. We also say correctly, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And St. Peter is the rock. But when does St. Peter act as the rock? When he is united to Christ. Just like me as a priest of God, I am truly called and rightly called Alter Christus, and I am truly another Christ. But that doesn't mean I act as another Christ in every moment of my life. It doesn't mean I speak as another Christ in every word that proceeds from my mouth. But when I act as priest, which is when I preach here the word of God as preached for the last 2,000 years, I am speaking as another Christ. When I say over the words of the bread, this is my body, I am speaking as another Christ. But when I go out in the streets and speak in another way, or when I go and speak in another way and have to go to confession for the other things that I have done, I am not speaking as another Christ. Not every word is another Christ. So likewise with the Holy Father. He is truly the rock. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And St. Paul also said, the rock is Christ. So therefore these two rocks must always be together. And when the rock of Peter goes against the rock of Christ, he's acting like Simon and not like St. Peter. Now, yesterday, Francis, the true Holy Father, acted as Simon. And he said, and he cursed, and he swore that he did not know the man. Even though he was selected by God to be the Holy Father. He also said to, to people in the world that he does not know the man, that he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ as true God and true man, yet he is still the true Holy Father. Sometimes he acts as Simon, sometimes he acts as Peter. He does not always act as Peter. And yesterday on July the 16th, he acted as Simon on the morning of Good Friday when he cursed and swore that he did not know the man. And when he scandalized the world by saying he, the first of the disciples, the first of the apostles, the chief of the apostles, said he did not know Jesus Christ. And when he said these words, he spoke a lie and he committed a sin. And now the next thing for Simon to do is to go out and weep bitterly. And we pray for Simon to go out and weep bitterly. Next thing for him to do is to weep to his mother and then to repent and come back and say, Aside, say to the Lord Jesus Christ, I love thee, I love thee, I love thee. And then feed the lambs, feed the lambs, and feed the sheep. But right now, Pope Francis is not feeding the lambs except poison. He is not feeding the sheep except lies. And so here is one of the lies yesterday. But it is only a lie as regards God. It is not a lie as regards the documents and movements of Vatican II. What happened in 1988? Archers of the Fev consecrated four bishops against the will of John Paul II. He consecrated four bishops and because he knew that the faith must be preserved and the Catholic priesthood must be preserved and the only way to preserve it was to remain independent from the wicked leaders in Rome and to reject their false teaching and wait until the time that the light of faith shines over eternal Rome again. Therefore, for the sake of the church, not for the sake of the SSPX, he consecrated four bishops to preserve the Catholic faith and Catholic tradition. And in response, what did John Paul II do? 
on June the 30th, uh, 1988, Archbishop Lefebvre saved the Catholic Church by consecrating four bishops. Two days later, on July the 2nd, 1988, John Paul II had prepared his response and he wrote a document called Ecclesia Dei Afflicta, the Church in Affliction. And in it, he established an Ecclesia Dei Commission to help souls leave the schism, he's called it, which is a lie, leave the overattachment to Catholic tradition and come back to the new Mass and come back to the new church. That's what he said right there in Ecclesia Dei Afflicta. He said, We must heal the schism. The schism is what? Those who are in favor of Vatican II are on one side, and those who are in favor of Catholic tradition are on the other. And we must show souls that you can still love tradition and love Vatican II. You can still have your Latin Mass and approve of the new Mass. You can still be the friend of God and of your belly. You can still be the friend of heaven and of hell. And so and this is what Pope, uh, John Paul II said in Ecclesia Dei Inflicta. I'm going to allow there to be a Latin Mass and I'm going to establish a society formed by 16 traitors. 16 Judases who left the Society of St. Pius X in 1988 to form the Fraternity of St. Peter. Now when they performed this fraternity, they said, we have confidence that Peter, and they say Peter is every word that proceeded from the mouth of Simon. But Peter is not every word that proceeded from the mouth of Simon. For sometimes Simon says, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And other times, Simon says, I am not, I do not know the man. And sometimes, Simon speaks the words the, the, uh, uh, that about himself, confidence in himself. Though everyone else leaves you, I never will. And then our Lord had to tell him, no, this night thou shalt deny me three times. And sometimes, Simon jumps out of the boat and goes after Christ when no other apostle will. Sometimes, Simon is great, and sometimes, Simon is weak. And when Simon is great, he's acting as Saint Peter. And when Simon is weak, he's acting as Simon in his weak flesh under the influence of the devil. And our Lord allowed Simon Peter to experience these things 2,000 years ago in order to teach us what must we do. Even after he became Saint Peter, he began to be weak and he began to, to, to favor the Judaizers. And therefore Saint Paul had to come and resist him to the face. In 1988, Artus Lefebvre stood up and resisted to the face John Paul II and said to him, These bishops must be consecrated to preserve the Catholic faith without the inhibitions, without the destruction, without the lies, without the deceit, without the maneuvering of a wicked modern Rome. But then Father Bizic and 15 other priests that followed him in betrayal said, No, we must have confidence in Rome. They promised us we'll get a bishop. 30 years have passed. 33 years have passed. They still don't have a bishop. They promised us that they'll take care of us and tradition will be protected. As the years have, have, have passed, they have had to become more and more liberal. They promised us that we'll be able to say the Latin Mass and we'll never have to say the new Mass. But already by 1999, 16 priests, the same number, 16 priests began the betrayal. And in 1999, 16 priests said the new Mass. And these 16 priests, are, by Father Bizic said, you can't do that. And the 16 priests said, oh yes we can. We can say the new Mass whenever we want. And you can't stop us. And Father Bizic said, but it's our special charism. We have the right to say the, new, the old Mass only. We have nothing against the new Mass. We have, we we're not against Vatican II. We accepted the light of tradition. He wrote a big long book about how Vatican II can be accepted in the light of tradition. Well, no, we can, we can accept the light of tradition. But then what happened? The 16 priests appealed to Rome. And Cardinal Ratzinger wrote back to them and said, the 16 priests have the right to say the new Mass. And not only those 16 priests, but every priest in the fraternity of St. Peter. And <coughs> they do not need to ask permission. <coughs> Furthermore, <coughs> in order to show your goodwill, <coughs> excuse me, I am requiring of every priest in the fraternity of St. Peter, the representative must on every Holy Thursday participate 
in the Chrism Novus Ordo Mass of the Bishop to show their unity with the modernist church. That was in 1999. And so there was a division in the fraternity of St. Peter. And they said, well, we have, to have, we have to obey. A priest in Canada was told, you must give communion in the hand. And that's the fraternity of St. Peter priest. You must give communion in the hand. And he said, I can't do that. Well, you must be obedient. So therefore, for one year, he did not give communion in the hand or on the tongue. He stopped giving communion in his parish. He then appealed to Rome because surely Rome would solve the problem. And the Ecclesia Dei Commission wrote back and said, you may now give communion on the tongue. You don't have to give communion in the hand. So the problem was solved. And for one year, people went to his mass and they were not able to receive Holy Communion because you have to be obedient. Now, it all comes home to roost. We're now in 2021. Now, what happened? Pope Francis says, all right, you already betrayed. You already accepted Novus Ordo Mass. You already accepted the, 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 the new ways. You accepted Vatican II. It was a condition of your acceptance. The Bishop of Dijon, France, kicked the fraternity of St. Peter out, priests out, just a few months ago. And then he finally he said, he said, this is just the beginning. There's going to be a moto proprio for you. It's coming soon. Ha, ha, ha. It came yesterday. What are they going to do? Here we have a problem. A man jumps off a skyscraper or a man jumps off a rock. In, two, in 1988, the 16 priests that betrayed the Catholic faith and the Catholic truth, who founded a society called the Fraternity of St. Peter, for the purpose of bringing souls from the Novus Ordo into, I mean, from the Catholic tradition into the Novus Ordo. They were to make them to leave Catholic tradition, to leave the so-called schism of Archbishop of Lefebvre and the other traditionalist groups, to leave them and come back to the Novus Ordo because you can trust the Romans. They're going to give you your Latin Mass. They're going to allow you to be married. They're going to allow you to be baptized. They're going to allow you to live a Catholic life inside the parish. You can live your Catholic life in our little parish that we reopened. You can leave your Catholic life at the nine o'clock mass. Pay attention now to the seven. Don't pay attention to the seven o'clock clown mass. Don't pay attention to the eleven o'clock conservative Novus Ordo mass. You can live your tradition again. Just be obedient and have confidence in God. Have confidence in God. God will protect His church. Be obedient. Be obedient. Be obedient. What kind of obedience? It is called a false obedience. The Alta Vendita in the early 1800s, discovered by the popes and released, said, we will destroy the Masons 200 years ago. We will destroy the Catholic Church by destroying women. And we will destroy the Catholic Church by elevating obedience to the highest of all virtues. And then using obedience, we will destroy the Catholic priesthood and the Catholic Church. That's what they have done. And they appeal to a false obedience. St. Thomas Aquinas tells us, Matthew, uh, Gospel of, of uh, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, we obey God rather than men. Should we obey our superiors at all times? Should we obey our superiors in everything because they represent God? And St. Thomas Aquinas says, no. Because sometimes our superiors act against God. Because sometimes our superiors command us to do things against God. One such example is yesterday. There are two practical commands that were made to Novus Ordo priests. One of them was, if you are going to be ordained a priest July 16, 2021 or later, in this motu proprio of eight points yesterday, and you wish to celebrate the Latin Tridentine Mass, you must write a letter to the bishop, which the bishop will forward to Rome, and Rome will decide whether you will be allowed to celebrate the Latin Tridentine Mass. Do not write this letter. Any young men in the Novus Ordo seminaries, the conservative seminaries, or intend to say the Latin Tridentine Mass, do not write this letter. It is a letter from Satan. It is a letter of compromise. It's a letter of lies. And the purpose of this letter is twofold. Number one, to get you to compromise your faith. Because you'll be asking 
for the privilege to do what you are obliged to do under pain of mortal sin anyway. I do not ask the Pope. I do not ask my Father. I do not ask anyone to obey God. Read the book of Maccabees where the young son, the youngest son of the Maccabees, the seventh son, his mother told him, do not offend God. His mother told him, don't eat of the, of the, of the swine's flesh. When the king asked the mother to, to, to tell him to change his mind, what did the youngest son say? He became angry with his mother. You're telling me not to eat the swine's flesh? You're telling me not to obey, the, the, not to disobey the law of Moses? Mother, I love you, but I don't care what you have to say. I will never go against the law of Moses. I will never go against the law of God, no matter what you say. I will not obey you, Mother. I obey God. And then he became the greatest of the seven martyrs. His mother encouraged him to obey God, and that's a wonderful thing. But he became angry because he thought that she was given an order from the mother when he will follow the order from God. And hence the Holy Ghost is telling us, <clears throat> we follow God first and man second. Man insofar as he represents God, man insofar as he is following God. So young priests who were ordained July 16th, officially Mount Carmel yesterday, and want to celebrate the Latin Trinitine Mass, do not ask for permission. Secondly, there was a second wicked command, among many others, in the eight, doc eight points of yesterday's document. If a priest is already celebrating the Latin Trinitine Mass, says Pope Francis, he must ask for the permission to continue to celebrate it. Now, why is this such a great sin? For the same reason, you have an obligation before God to celebrate this Mass. You're a priest of God, made to offer the true sacrifice, not the false sacrifice made to give true absolution, not false absolutions, made to preach the true word of God, not the lies of heretics, and you are not to ask permission to preach the true word of God. In all my years within the Society of St. Pius X, before I had to stand up against my superior's wickedness, I was never ever given an instruction, go and teach Jesus as God. I was never given an instruction, go and say the Latin Mass, because this is my duty, and my superiors knew it, and I know it. But they did say, you're stationed in Phoenix, Arizona. You're stationed in Pulse Falls, Idaho. You're stationed in Iloilo, Philippines. You're stationed in Bombay, India. You're stationed in Madras, India, in, uh, in Palayamkotai, India. You're stationed in Singapore. And you're stationed in Davao, and so on. They told me the places where I would be stationed. They did not tell me what doctrine to preach, because it's the doctrine of Christ. But now they're saying what you should preach, what you should not preach. Don't be political. Be careful. Make sure the things that you say are approved. Don't be controversial. They never said that before. Because the faith has changed. Therefore, those priests who are being told, ask your bishop, do not write the letter to the bishop. Do not ask to continue to say the Latin Mass. In fact, I challenge the priest in the Novus Ordo, to stand up this Sunday and say, I am now making an announcement. From this moment on, I celebrate only the Latin Tridentine Mass. I will never celebrate that new abomination ever again. This Mass is the Mass of Christ, the Mass of the Truth, and I apologize to all of you for having said the new Mass as long as I have. But now I say the Latin Mass only and if they want to throw me out of the synagogue, let them throw me out of the synagogue. And here it is in the, in, in, in the epistle today, in the gospel today, the Feast of St. Alexis. What does it say? Or rather in the epistle, St. Paul, right? Money is the root of all evils. It's in the epistle today. Dearly beloved, Godliness and, and content with contentment is a great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and we certainly can carry nothing out. But having food and wherewith to be covered, with these we are content. For they that will become rich fall into temptation, 
and unto the snare of the devil, and unto many unprofitable and hurtful desires. So this is the desire to keep your pension, the desire to keep your rectory, the desire to keep in a safe place in this world, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For covetousness is the root of all evils. And what does what St. Paul by the Holy Ghost say to St. Timothy, the young bishop? With, some, with all evils, which some desiring have erred from the faith. Right now, priests in the Novus Ordo churches, in the diocese, in the Eternity of St. Peter, in the Institute of Christ the King, in the various groups that are saying the Latin trying to Mass, they are being tempted to err from the faith. They are being told, if you don't ask permission to say that Mass, I might give you permission, and I might not. Don't ask for the demonic permission. And they, they so some being tempted have erred from the faith. And why have they erred from the faith? And have entangled themselves in many sorrows. That's the history of the Praetorian St. Peter, in suit of Christ the King, and the conservative movement. They have so many more sorrows than we have. Because when they teach the truth, they have to be careful because they're going to get called into the bishop's office. And when they say the Latin Mass, they have to be careful because someone might turn them in. And they still have to say the new Mass, which they hate to say because no one else will say it. And if, and if the, someone else comes in, it will be worse than them. And they have many sorrows. And now there are priests throughout the whole world, terrorized and in great sorrow today. Because what am I going to do? My bishop is a mason. My bishop is evil. My bishop is wicked in every way. He's not going to allow me to continue to say the Latin Mass. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Continue to say the true Mass. Be ready to be expelled from your parish. Take faithful around you and say, I am going to stand for the truth of my ancestors. Athanasius, my ancestor, he was, he was excommunicated three times. And, men, and so many of the saints were thrown out of their bishoprics and thrown out of their dioceses and thrown out of their churches because they held the faith. St. Joseph Att was martyred because he was going to preach the faith. And so it is all the way down the line. There are many sorrows in those that try to stay out of sorrows because they are not going to stand on Christ. And because they're trying to be... They are entangled in many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, Fly these things. Pursue justice. Pursue godliness. Pursue faith. Pursue charity. Pursue patience. Pursue meekness. Fight the good fight of the faith and lay hold on eternal life. That's what St. Paul says today in the epistle. Fight the good fight. Lay hold to the true faith. This is the, the grace that's being given to many priests now. Don't be afraid. And as Father Hannafin used to say, and I mentioned yesterday, so many priests coming to my house as a little child, over a hundred of them. I'm talking to Father Hannafin back in the early 70s. They were all ordained to say the Latin Mass. They didn't like the new Mass. They were going to be thrown out of their dioceses. They were going to be thrown out of their churches. They tried to be as conservative as they could. They tried to have confessions. They tried to say the most conservative Mass. And Father Hannafin told them, leave that parish. Say only the true Mass. Don't say the new Mass because it's causing souls to go to hell. But how am I going to survive, Father? How am I going to survive? How am I going to survive? Where is my pension? Where is my health insurance? I'm a sickly priest. Where is my parish? And Father Hannafin would simply say, there, I don't know of one priest that has stood for the truth and starved. And now we go to the Gospel of the Mass today at the Feast of St. Alexis. And what does it say in the Gospel today? From the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 19. Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the seat of his majesty, you shall sit on the twelve seats of judgment, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. That's the twelve apostles. So that's where they're going to be. And everyone that hath left house, everyone that left house, that left rectory, that left diocese, that left brethren, that left their fellow priests, that left the sisters, that left their father, that left their mother, or left their wife, that left their children, that left their lands, for my name's sake, 
shall receive an hundredfold and shall possess eternal life. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ says in the gospel. We shall receive a hundredfold. Now, what about the return of St. Peter? Now they've got a problem on their hands. Their foundation is built on obedience to a man and not to God. Their foundation is built on confidence in the man in Rome, not in the man of God. Now they've got a problem. They issued a statement today concerning the mode of proprio of yesterday, or actually they issued it yesterday. We are in great sorrow and sadness. We are deeply concerned at this motu proprio, and we don't know how much restrictions are going to be applied, but pray and have confidence in the Holy Ghost. Father Hannafin used to say, have confidence in God. God will take care of us. God will always protect His church. But what does God do to protect His church? If there is a house on fire, and babies are burning, and there's an orphanage, and they're all burning, God will save them. What did God do? He puts you there next to the orphanage. He put you there with a water bucket. He put you there with strong arms. He put you there with the ability to take those children out. And you are the instrument God is to use to bring them out. And you can't say, oh, the house is on fire. God save them. I'll pray for them. You get your behind in that fire. And you pull them out. God's kingdom is a real kingdom on this earth. It is not of this earth, but it is on this earth. And the kingdoms on this earth are run by men. There must be a real man to go into the fire. There must be a real man to hear confessions. There must be a real man to absolve. There must be a man to, to bless the sick. There must be a real man to, to, to say the mass. There must be a real man to preach the faith. And this man is condemned by the world and will always be condemned by the world. And now he's condemned by the church. The Lord said he's going to be condemned by the church, and it's happening right now. Now the three of St. Peter is a problem. We have to do what they say. They left the Diocese of Dijon. In doing so, they offended God. They were there taking care of sheep in France. And now they have left them because of holy obedience. Is it holy obedience to leave children burning in a fire? Is it holy obedience to leave someone dying in a pit? Our Lord Jesus Christ said, there's a rule that says, don't work on the Sabbath. But which of you, seeing an ass or an ox in the, in the pit, will not draw him out on the Sabbath? So the Son of Man cures on the Sabbath, even though it's against the rules. We are not here to follow the rules. We are here to save souls. And the rules are put into place to facilitate, to make easier our saving of souls. And when the rules work against that, we don't worry about the rules. We follow the law of Epikiah, which is to follow the spirit of the law over and against the letter of the law. When the letter of the law goes against that spirit, we are here to save souls. The supreme law is the salvation of souls. The Lutheran and St. Peter should not have listened to that bishop and left Dijon, but now they're trapped. And what about the Society of St. Pius X? They haven't yet made their statement as of today. They're waiting for the reaction of the reaction. What are they there for? One possibility is this. Those who leave the Fraternity of St. Peter and the Institute of Christ the King because, after all, they betrayed them and they left the diocese and they were thrown out and they stopped the Mass, they go to the Society of St. Pius X, which is controlled, infiltrated, and run by the bad guys. They go inside the Society of St. Pius X and there they are told the same theological baloney that is in the other places. They are brought into a corral where they're going to be eaten up, swallowed, and destroyed. The Messiah St. Pius X should be saying, this motu proprio, all it is, is the implementation of Sumorum Motificum. It's not against it. It's the implementation of Quattro Ordeganos. Because in Quattro Ordeganos, read the document of October 22nd, 1984. And on that first indult, Augustine Meyer, Cardinal Meyer, in the name of John Paul II, said, You can have your Latin Mass on the condition you accept without equivocation the new Mass. Furthermore, it should never be said in parish churches. Come forward in 2021. It should not be said in parish churches. Where did Pope Francis get that from? John Paul II, that's where he got it from. Back in 84, they said you can have your Latin Mass, but you cannot have a Latin Mass at a marriage. You can't have a Latin Mass at a baptism. You can't have a Latin Mass at confirmation. Only outside of parish churches at a time and place designated by the, by the bishop. That's what he said. 
84. 2021, all it is is a repetition of 84. There's nothing more in it. Nothing against 84. The conditions were so strict that the 84, 84 uh, uh, document, you cannot have your Latin Mass without writing, putting in writing that you accept the new Mass. Now they're saying the same thing in the new one. Except they don't say put it in writing. But you must accept unequivocally the new Mass in Vatican II. So we can't, so now the study of the Society of St. Pius X now is a problem. Because the Society of St. Pius X is working along with the modernists. The Society of St. Pius X has accepted the marriages over the approval of the local bishop. Now are they going to get that approval? They accepted the confessions. They accepted working with the diocese and seeing the indult mass in some places. And also one point that Taylor Marshall made yesterday, because he doesn't understand the situation, one of the points made in the motu proprio was this, in Article 3. He said, you can have the Latin mass, but the epistle and gospel should be proclaimed in the vernacular. And Taylor Marshall said, I hope the society doesn't do that. He's uninformed. The society's been doing that for many years many many years in Europe many years they have been doing the, 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 the epistle and vernacular and the gospel in the vernacular and now Pope Francis is saying you got to do it so what's going to happen Institute of Christ the King, Fraternity of St. Peter and the Society of St. Pius X and places in Europe they all have done and do the many places the epistle and gospel in the vernacular well, that's not a mortal sin. It's not a heresy. I guess we can do that. What are we going to do? They bring you one step at a time away from God until there's nothing of God left. What are they standing on? The approval of modernists and wicked men in Rome. What does the Levant say? We reject the Rome of, of neo-modernism and, and of this liberalism. That's what we reject. And until that light of faith comes over Rome again, we stay dependent. We are true followers of Pope Paul VI then, true followers of Pope Francis now. We are true followers of the Pope in his papacy. We are truly obedient to him because we are obedient to the rock which is Christ and to Peter when he is united to Christ. We are not obedient arbitrarily. And that the, the, the time will come when they shall fail and Christ shall win. In any case, we'll close here. But we must, we must stand firm in our faith and those priests in the Novus Ordo who are being tempted, let them not sign the documents. Let them not write the letters. And remember that bishops are cowards. Father Hannifin, my pastor in 1973, went before the Bishop of Louisville, Kentucky. He went to him and he said, Father, what are you asking? I'm not asking anything. I am telling you that I am continuing to say the Latin Trinitine Mass. I'm never saying this abomination of the new Mass. And I've got a little parish out in Boston, Kentucky. And I'm saying the Mass there for those people who ever wants to come. Are you asking my permission? No, I'm not asking your permission. And the bishop said, okay, okay, Frank, okay, okay. He was petrified of him. Don't be afraid of the devil. And don't think being nice to him is going to cause the devil to be nice to you. Stand firm with the faith. Don't play games with it. And don't go through the stupid channels. <laughs> Don't write to the bishop and then write to the cardinal and then go to the prefects and the doctrine. They're all, well, I'm going to get my case heard before Rome. And they're going to hear the case and hear the case and hear the case. Like I mentioned yesterday, I know of one case that went before Rome in 1999. And the priest is waiting for the just response and is totally 100% innocent of all, all accused crimes. It is now 2021. The response has not yet come. The case continues. 24 years, 23 years, 22 years. Is it going to end? Sure, the second that priest dies. And then they'll throw it in the garbage. Don't go down that foolish path. Don't let them play mental games. Stay firm with the faith. Stay firm with the Latin Mass. Stay firm with tradition. Stand up bold against the bishops. Form little parishes. Hold the faith, hold the faith fast and firm. And then also call us. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, myself as a fiber of the priest with me. We will help you learn about the tradition of the church. Go through the, go through the Catholic tradition and Catholic studies. And stay firm in the tradition. And they're trying to keep us isolated and cut apart. No. Stay firm in the faith. And the enemy shall be defeated. And Our Lady will soon have her victory. But don't fall for the wickedness of that document of the guards of tradition of yesterday. Those of us, you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.